Hello, I'm Dr. Manoli Sarito Michelakis. I'm a veterinarian and board certified veterinary dermatologist, and I work at the Faculty of Veterinary Science of the University of Thessaly in Greece. The topic of this presentation is what has changed in the management of canine bacterial pyoderma after the emergence of methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius. I will start with a brief overview of canine bacterial pyoderma and then I will introduce methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius. Following, we will see how commonly we isolate this organism from dogs with pyoderma and how we can diagnose them. Finally, we will see how the emergence of methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius has changed the way we manage dogs with pyoderma and what we can do to stop their spreading. As you probably know, Bacterial pyoderma is very common in dogs, and if we culture these lesions, usually we will isolate Staphylococcus pseudodermidius. This is exactly the same organism we used to call Staphylococcus intermedius a few years ago. What is important to remember is that Staphylococcus pseudodermidius is an opportunistic pathogen, and the pyoderma due to this organism is almost always a secondary problem. It is a complication of other skin diseases like atopic dermatitis or demodicosis or of systemic diseases like hypothyroidism, for example. Clinically, we speak about surface pyoderma like in these three dogs superficial pyoderma and deep pyoderma. As the name says, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius is Staphylococcus pseudodermidius showing in vitro resistance to methicillin, which is a penicillin. And this happens because it has an altered penicillin binding protein which is called penicillin binding protein 2A. Here, on the left, you see a methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus pseudodermidius with the wild type penicillin binding protein in green, and on the left, you see methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius with the altered protein in red. And as you can see, penicillins, like methicillin, can only bound to the wild-type protein and they can only kill methicillin-susceptible Staphylococcus pseudodermidius, but they cannot kill methicillin-resistant strains. The gene that synthesizes penicillin-binding protein 2A is called MECA gene, and is carried by a mobile genetic element called staphylococcal cassette chromosome MEC. Here you can see the genetic element in yellow and the gene as a red circle. This genetic element can be transferred among staphylococci and this is the way that methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius can spread. The big problem is that this staphylococcal cassette chromosome usually carries additional genes that confer resistance to many antimicrobials. And this means that besides being resistant by definition to all penicillins, cephalosporins, and carbamopinens, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius is commonly multi drug resistant. And it's not a surprise to see that the strain we have cultured from a dog with pyoderma is resistant 
to every single antimicrobial that is licensed for veterinary use. For this reason, this organism, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus pseudendromedius, from a therapeutic standpoint, is the superbug. In this slide, you can see the prevalence of canine pyoderma due to methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudendromedius that has been reported from different areas of the world. But please remember that these figures are probably an overestimate of the true prevalence because they derive mostly from second opinion referral practices. We know that it is relatively easy to diagnose pyoderma using cytology. And if we want to be sure that all these cocci we can see here are Staphylococcus pseudendermidius, then we have to perform a culture. Now, if we want to prove that these Staphylococcus pseudendermidius bacteria are methicillin resistant, the best way is to perform PCR for MEC aging. This is wonderful for research, but it is not practical in the clinical setting. So what we do in the everyday clinical practice is perform in vitro susceptibility testing. And if our strain is resistant to oxacillin, a molecule very close to methicillin, then we call the isolate a methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus pseudendromedius. After the emergence of these organisms in recent years, three things have changed in the way we manage dogs with pyoderma. We are using culture and in vitro antimicrobial susceptibility testing much more frequently. We use systemic antimicrobials more rationally and sparingly, and we put more emphasis on the topical treatment of pyoderma. If we take a look on the previous edition of the classical veterinary dermatology textbook, The Small Animal Dermatology, we will see that Staphylococcus pseudodermidius, which is today synonymous with Staphylococcus, Intermediates, has not become more resistant to antibiotics over the years, which allows the clinician to select an antibiotic on an empirical basis. And also that previous antibiotic use in a dog did not increase the resistance. But now if we take a look on the later edition, the last edition of the same book, we will see that this situation is now changing and multi-resistant, often methicillin-resistant strains are now commonly isolated in certain countries. In the previous edition, excellent sensitivity to amoxicillin clavulanate, oxacillin, cephalosporins, erythromycin, potentiated sulfonamides, erofloxacin and chlorophenicol, Good sensitivity to clindamycin, fair sensitivity to tetracycline. But now we know that methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudodermidius is by definition resistant to penicillins like amoxicillin, clavulanate, and oxacillin, to cephalosporins, and typically it is also resistant to macrolides like erythromycin, to lincosamides like clindamycin to potentiated sulfonamides and to chemolones like enrofloxus. So, the first big change we used to perform culture and in vitro susceptibility testing if there were rods in cytology, in dogs with deep pyoderma and in dogs with superficial pyoderma that did not respond very well to the empirical treatment. Now we have two additional indications for culture. 
dogs with superficial pyoderma that have recently received antimicrobials because this is a risk factor for infection by a methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudo intermediate strain, and also dogs with superficial pyoderma that live with another dog that has a confirmed diagnosis of infection by this organism. What about the rational use of systemic antimicrobials? Now, we have classified the antimicrobials we can use to treat dogs with pyoderma in three groups. The first choice antimicrobials can be used without culture and susceptibility testing. They include amoxicillin clavulanic acid, first generation cephalosporins like cephalexin and cephadroxyl, lincosamides like clindamycin, and potentiated sulfonamides. The second choice antimicrobials can only be used after culture and in vitro susceptibility testing and if the strain is resistant to all the first choice drugs. They include the fluoroquinolones and also the third generation cephalosporins, cefpodoxin and cefovexin, although there is some controversy about the last drugs. And some people think they can be moved to the first choice drugs. Finally, we have the third choice, antimicrobials, which are only used after culture and in vitro susceptibility testing, showing that the strain is resistant to all first choice and second choice antimicrobials. And these drugs include ceftazidine, azithromycin, clarithromycin, chloramphenicol, amicacin and rifabicin. Finally, do not use the drugs that are critically important for humans, like carbapenems, which anyway are not useful for dogs with methicillin resistant staphylococcus, pseudo intermediate infections, because these organisms are resistant carbapenems. Do not use glycopeptides like vancomycin and tacoplanin and do not use linezolate. These are very important drugs for humans. They can save human lives so it is not wise to use them for our patients. The last change. We are now using topical treatment more frequently. We can use some hooks with chlorexidine, for example, for generalized lesions, or creams and ointments with fusidic acid for localized lesions. And the combination of intensive topical treatment along with the treatment of the underlying cause of bioderma may be all that is necessary to cure the dose. And this is shown very nicely in this publication, where dogs with pyoderma due to generalized demodicosis responded very well to topical antibacterials plus medicinal treatment. Lastly, what can we do to delay the spreading of methicillin resistant staphylococcus to the dermis? For all dogs with pyoderma, we should always follow current indications for performing culture and in vitro antimicrobial sensitivity testing. We have to follow current recommendations about the rational use of systemic antimicrobials and we have to be very careful to use the correct dose and duration of treatment, never underdose. We have to use more topical treatments along with the treatment of the underlying problem and also we have to 
wash our hands with soap and water or with an alcohol antiseptic before and after examining in the, each patient. Especially for dogs with confirmed pyoderma due to methicillin resistant Staphylococcus pseudo intermediates, we have to wear gloves to examine these dogs. And after we finish, we have to disinfect, to decontaminate the examination room. Sometimes we also recommend some decontamination measures for the dog's household. And also we have to try to apply some isolation measures. This is not very easy, but for example, we can arrange to examine these patients at the end of the working day when there are no other dogs in the hospital. Finally, I would like to propose you four papers if you want to further study the treatment of canine pyoderma. This is a very nice article about the topical therapy. This is an article about the systemic antimicrobials. And this is an article with guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of superficial folliculitis. Please note that this article that has been published last year in the Veterinary Dermatology is an open access article. And this is another open access article published in the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine, which deals not specifically with canine pyoderma, but in general with the use of antimicrobials in veterinary medicine. Thank you very much for your